Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today what I want to talk about is the messy middle, right? So I had somebody message me on Instagram a few days ago and she was talking about how she gets to this middle spot in her painting where maybe the whole thing starts to look like mud or like mush and it's hard to find your way out of that, right? If you're not practiced at doing that. And I find that that messy middle part generally comes down to one of a couple of things. As artists, right, we're used to wanting to create beautiful things. We see beauty more sensitively than other people. Um, we are very sensitive to what we're seeing, so if we're looking at mud, it's very disappointing and unmotivating. And there's just a certain amount of acceptance that goes into this, that this whole messy middle painting thing is just sort of part of the process and the more you paint the more miles you log on your brush the more you're going to see that and the more you're going to get used to it and it's not going to freak you out so much and make you just not want to finish the thing it's important to keep going you're not going to become a worse artist by making more art it can only get better okay so what I'm going to do is work in my bigger sketchbook and I'm going to create a problem to illustrate all of this and then we're going to solve the problem. One of the first things I want to tell you is that transparent paint can be problematic. And so usually the only true transparent paints are professional paints. And if you haven't seen them before, um, it's usually the dark toned colors, but if you look, it's really see-through. That can be challenging to work with. Truly transparent paints, and this might just be personal opinion, and I'm not telling you that this has to be a rule. What it does is it makes everything look sort of uncertain, you know, indecisive, wishy-washy. Paintings look really good when they're intentional. That can be loose intentional, it can be messy intentional, it can be childlike intentional but there's something really tentative about transparent paint. It's great for mixing. It is great for glazing. I use soft body paints. It's kind of my own mixture of paints to get that, but these can be a little bit transparent just because of the consistency of the paint. And so sometimes just due to the kind of paint that you're using, it can take a couple of layers in order for things to look okay so i could come in this is a an opaque paint but it's a soft body and if i smear it around a lot you can tell that it's way more opaque than this but it's still got a lot of transparency to it and so the first thing to note when you're making paintings is that look at your painting is there a lot of transparency in it is there too much transparency everywhere because it might just be that you want to come in with opaques i'm just going to come along and i'm essentially going to make myself a happy little mess on this page okay so i'm going to put some reds in i'm going to do a landscape and a lot of times, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to do a painting. Complementary colors are good, so let's make a complementary color. Laying in a landscape. You know, what would be awful is to just put some of this straight on there. This is just like a phthalo green. Let's really kind of screw this up as much as we can. Maybe we'll grab some of this yellow. As you can see, there's a lot of transparency in these paints. Things are getting muddy. Let's throw some of this color in. So this is pretty bad. So let's talk about why it's bad other than the fact that it looks like some sort of Christmas nightmare with the red and the green. It's Again, it's got a lot of transparency in here. It's okay to have some. And again, I'm not trying to say that any transparency is bad, but if you don't have enough layers built up in your transparency, especially if this was on a canvas or a panel, you don't really wanna see back to the board or the canvas. You need layers. And when you have layers and then you have some transparent brush marks over that, that can be really beautiful. But if you haven't gotten to that point, that transparency is just gonna fall flat. It's gonna look anemic. It's gonna look like there's just not enough richness to the painting. So that's one of the problems. What's the deal with mud, right? 
you actually need mud. So the thing is, and the thing when I laugh and everybody goes, I'm always, I get stuck in the middle and I don't know what to do and my painting's all muddy and I'm thinking, that's great. You actually, if you want your color and your painting to sing, you need mud. Mud is gonna what makes, it's gonna make that color look beautiful. Why? Because mud is the opposite of really beautiful, clean color. That contrast is gonna make that color stand out. Like if I come in here, and let me mix up like a really vibrant green. Like this looks really good over here because it's got this icky brown color underneath it, right? So what I'm gonna do is paint, okay? And I'm gonna get this to some semblance of a landscape. I'm gonna slowly work on fixing this. And now the first thing that I'm gonna do, because what's annoying me most um, isn't just the color, it's that there's too much transparency. It's too wishy-washy. This is acrylic paint. It is not a watercolor painting, which is a whole other thing. If this needs something else to it, and I think it needs some lighter lights and variety and so on. So here we go. Oh, and another tip, if you have a muddy mess, let it dry if you don't want to continue everything turning into mud. It's really hard to cover wet paint and go into it without it starting to mix on the substrate. This already looks better. Can you see that? This part of the page is already looking less awful. There's more layers to it, there's more depth. A lot of that transparency is covered up. You can still see pops of it. It's not that you have to cover up every inch of it, but you just don't want the majority of it to look transparent. And building opacity doesn't have to be limited to paint. You can come in, right? This paint's still a little bit wet, but you can come in with crayons. So if you have neo colors, right, and you want to come in and cover up some of this transparency by coloring in leaves, you can go ahead and do that. So if you'll notice, what I'm using is not a particularly bright color. You don't need to use bright color everywhere just to combat that muddy feeling. Just using clean, intentional color and going in kind of thick with it. And this is still a little bit wet over here. But you know, I can do that. I could come in with a different color and start covering it up more over here. So this isn't necessarily about getting rid of everything, it's about clarifying things and having less of the things that aren't working. Mud isn't bad, transparency at all isn't bad. Too much of it is what makes things look um, icky. This isn't really a messy middle tip, but this is kind of a dark thing right now. And sometimes when you come in with some light, it can look really nice. And everything's a balancing act, right? So I want this part to go back a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and same thing as that other area. I'm gonna take some of this paint off. I've already got paint under here, so making this a little bit more transparent is gonna help it go back, but it's still gonna be rich because of that paint underneath. Soften this. And the sky's looking, again, aside from the transparency issue, it looks a little ominous. So we're gonna calm that down. And do you see how this is better already? All I've done is kept going and kept adding more layers. I have not done anything amazing to this. All I've done is kept laying down paint and you know, drawing with some neo colors and just getting rid of that, some of that transparency, some of that mud and putting some lights in there because it was too dark. That's it. Fixing something and getting out of that middle spot does not have to be this super tricky process.
All right, I have to let this dry before I can do anything else with so it. So much of this is just don't get discouraged about the middle part. It's so easy. And I think too, you know, when we lay down those first few brush strokes, right? Or that first color is splashed across the page or that first line is made, it looks amazing. You almost don't even wanna touch the thing when you first start painting because there's something really raw and beautiful about those first marks. And it's sort of like it quickly gets filled into, again, the mess. It can help to look at that messy middle as an opportunity. That is going to give you that foundation you need to build upon layers in your painting. If it's not beautiful, it's gonna make it easier to let it go. And that's really what we need to be doing most of the time anyway. Okay, so I just made a couple changes while it was drying. This thing, if you'll notice, is just, it's much less atrocious than it was when we started. There was a whole bunch of transparent paint, there was mud, and now, you know, is it a masterpiece? No, do I like it? Yeah, it's really fresh. It's got a lot of the things that I like in it. You know, I like how the paint's showing through up here a little bit and that kind of visual texture to things. I like the different kinds of marks from the crayons, but, this is the other way out of the middle. This painting is still in the middle, and the reason is it really doesn't have any of those little sort of finishing touches that make it pop and bring everything together. Those finishing touches don't have to be bright colors. They don't have to be anything super obvious. It's just little things that add richness and make the painting feel complete. I'm gonna go in and make some marks and pull the rest of this together. And adding subtle things too, like these marks with this are not going to be really obvious, but they're there. It just adds something. Adding some more opacity over here. The amount of time I spent doing finishing touches on this was almost nothing. It was a couple of minutes. I grabbed some crayons and I made a variety of marks. If you only use paint, you could have done something like that with a paintbrush and just come in and just add a little bit. And I think the only thing I wanna do is bring some of this red down here because it's a very like this and that thing. So I'm just gonna come in here. This went from a very, very messy painting with horrific colors, awful reds and greens, transparent, mushy, muddy paint, and it turned into a painting that is actually vibrant and colorful in its own way. Just because something looks awful doesn't mean it has to stay looking awful. And especially if you're working with acrylics, it is so easy to layer and cover stuff up, but keep some of what's underneath it if you'd like to and pull everything together. It really, really, really just does not take a lot. So. The three tips are, take a look at your painting. If it is muddy, you probably need some clear color somewhere. It doesn't have to be bright color, but just really clean, opaque color so that you can see what's happening with your painting and start to compose it. If you have a lot of transparent paint, again, come in with some opaque paint. And even if you don't wanna totally cover it, if you scumble over it with your brush, which is just doing like this, that will just give it some opacity. And the final tip is finishing touches do a lot to your painting. They just add another layer of opacity so that things are coming forward. So I hope that this was helpful in showing you how to use these tips to pull a painting back together. I'm extra happy with how this turned out because I can use it as a reference for the painting I'm working on over there. And um, yeah, this went great and I hope that when you find yourself in the middle of a piece that you don't get those so discouraged, you know? It doesn't mean that that piece is gonna work out, but if you keep going and try to make it at least a little bit better, you're going to learn something and that knowledge is going to take you into the next painting and everything is just going to get better and better and better over time. So thanks for watching and see you soon.